In today's video, I'm gonna focus on a specific component found in almost every electric guitar. We're gonna talk about these boys. This is a potentiometer, or pot for short. Pots are what make your volume and tone controls possible. But how do they work? What kind of pots are out there? And which ones will be compatible with your guitar? As it turns out, this is a huge topic that I can't fit into a single video, but today we'll start by looking at what potentiometers are, how they affect the tone in your guitar circuit, we'll look at different resistance values and tapers, and then we'll look at how to find a pot that will be compatible with your guitar project. So let's start with some basics. What is a potentiometer? Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, but here's a relatively standard one that you'd find in a guitar. This is a CTS 500K audio pot. CTS is the manufacturer, 500K refers to the resistance value of the pot, and audio refers to the taper of the pot. More on that later. At the top, you've got the shaft, which is where the knob goes. Below that, you've got this threaded part called the bushing, and then you have the main housing of the pot below, with these three lugs sticking out. Electronically, potentiometers function as a kind of variable resistor, which means that as you adjust a pot, you're changing the resistance values between these three lugs. If we take a look inside a pot, we see that there are two outer lugs connected by a resistive strip, corresponding to the value of the pot itself. The center lug is connected to a wiper which moves across this resistive track as we turn the knob, which gives us those changing resistance values. Now, in guitar wiring diagrams, we're almost always looking at these pots from the side with the shaft facing downwards, or we're looking at these pots from behind. So it's important to keep this in mind when you're referencing diagrams, because it's easy to get something upside down. I've done it multiple times. For today's diagrams, I'll be showing the pot from behind, meaning turning a knob clockwise will correspond to the wiper moving counterclockwise. I'll also be naming these lugs L1, L2, and L3, but keep in mind different people use different standards. When we turn the knob all the way up, we'll see that the center lug, L2, connects directly to L1, and has a full 500 kilo ohms of resistance to L3. When we turn the knob all the way down, we'll see the opposite is the case. With that out of the way, let's see how pots function in basic volume and tone controls. And just a heads up, this will be a simplified explanation and not the full story, but it'll give you a basic understanding of how these controls work in electric guitars. There are a couple ways to hook up a volume control, but most commonly in diagrams, you'll see the hot signal from your pickups connected to lug 1, the output signal connected to lug 2, and lug 3 connected to ground, often soldered to the outer casing of the pot itself. When turned all the way up, you'll see that the input and output are directly connected with no resistance, and they're separated from ground by the maximum amount of resistance, in this case 500 kilo ohms, which gives us our audio at full volume. As we turn the volume down, the resistance between the input and output increases, while the resistance between the output and ground decreases. Electronically, this divides the voltage and lowers the volume of the signal. When rolled all the way down, our output connects directly to ground, killing the signal. Now, tone controls work a little bit differently, only using lugs 2 and 3. Let's connect one lug to the hot signal, and the other to ground. As we roll down the knob, more and more of the signal will escape to ground. To complete this tone control, let's add a capacitor in series with our pot, either on the hot or the ground side. The capacitor will act as a filter, blocking lower frequencies, shown in red, while allowing higher frequencies, shown in blue, to pass through and escape to ground. This means that rolling down the tone control will remove higher frequencies from our output signal, while leaving the lower frequencies unaffected. It's important to note that in passive guitar wiring, volume in tone pots will only remove tone from your signal. They won't add to it. They are in effect opening up shorts to ground for your signal to escape. In fact, even if we turn our volume and tone controls all the way up, a tiny amount of signal still ends up escaping the ground through the pot, mainly in the form of higher frequencies. However, we can control how much high frequency signal escapes by choosing pots with different resistance values. The resistance value of your pots can affect how bright or dark your guitar sounds. Higher value pots will sound brighter and have more treble, while lower value pots will have a slightly darker or duller sound to them, since more of those high frequencies can escape to ground. Single coil pickups, like those found in Telecasters or Stratocasters, tend to be fairly bright, 
so they'll conventionally use 250k plots to prevent the pickups from sounding too harsh. On the other hand, humbuckers and P90s tend to sound warmer and have less treble, so guitars with these pickups will often have 500k pots to retain more of their treble frequencies. But this isn't a hard rule. If you find your pickups sound harsh, you can try using lower value pots. And if you find your pickups sound muddy, you can try higher value pots. Heck, you can even mix and match pots. I have a 500k volume pot and a 250k tone in my HSS Super Tele, and I think it sounds pretty good. There are also 1 meg pots, which you can sometimes find in Jazz Masters, which contribute to making the guitar sound even brighter. And if you want to retain even more high frequency signal from your pickups, you could opt for a no load tone pot. Finally, you'll sometimes find really low value pots like 25k on active guitars. Now, due to manufacturing tolerances, pots will often not be exactly the resistance value that they're sold as. If I measure this 500k pot by connecting my electrometer to L1 and L3, you'll see that my electrometer actually pulls up 467 kilo ohms. This difference isn't too significant in my opinion, but if you are someone who is super particular and intentional about your choice of parts, measuring your pots beforehand might be a good idea. Next, let's talk about taper. Taper refers to the relationship between a pot's knob position and its resistance value. Practically, the main thing taper will affect on your guitar is how fast the volume or tone decreases as you turn down your knobs. If I measure the resistance values between lugs 2 and 3 for different rotations of the knob, I can plot out their relationship on a graph. This example shows a straight line, indicating a linear taper, also known as B taper. And if I plot out the resistance values between lugs 1 and 2, I'll get a vertically flipped version of the same line. While linear taper pots are common in electronics, they're not always preferred for volume and tone controls. What you'll more often come across is audio taper. Audio taper, also known as A taper or log taper, approximates an exponential curve. This is the most common and natural sounding taper to use in volume and tone pots, since we humans perceive loudness on a logarithmic scale. For most guitar projects, I would recommend using audio taper when possible, especially if you like doing volume swells on your guitar. That being said, some people do prefer B taper because it can give more precision in the upper values, though you may not notice a significant drop in volume until you roll your volume control down to about 3. If you want to split the difference between audio and linear taper, CTS makes a J taper pot. These appear to be relatively uncommon, but I've spotted them in 250 kilo ohm and 1 mega ohm configurations. Another taper that you can get is C taper, also known as reverse audio or reverse log taper. These can be useful in some left-handed guitars which have their volume and tone controls wired in reverse. There are also M and N tapers which are used in balanced blend pots. We'll talk more about those in a future video. Finally, a controls taper can also be affected by adding resistors in parallel to the pot, which is something you find in treble bleeds. Before you go ahead and order some pots for your project, we have one more extremely important topic to cover, which is physical compatibility. Not every pot will fit in every guitar, nor will every pot work with every kind of knob. And that's kind of important when it comes to doing repair, doing mods, or even assembling your own warmth build. Let's start with shaft type, meaning the part of the pot that the knob mounts to. On guitar pots, we typically see split shaft and solid shaft, and both of those categories are split into two subcategories. Split shaft pots accept push-on type knobs held on by friction, like those often found on strats or Les Pauls. They come in two varieties, 24 spline, often found on US pots, and 18 spline, often found on metric pots. These standards aren't cross-compatible, so you'll want to make sure that you match the knurling between your pots and knobs. Solid shaft pots will accept their own kind of knobs, which are fastened with a set screw. They also come in two varieties, quarter inch and the slightly smaller six millimeters. 
Now, if you've got knobs meant for quarter inch solid shaft, you can actually mount them on any of these other pots with these quarter inch brass pot sleeves. Link in the description. Next, you'll want to make sure that the bushing on your pot, that's this threaded portion here, is long enough to fit the thickness of the mounting surface on your guitar, plus a nut and washer. There are short shaft pots which have a bushing length of a quarter inch, or about 6.35 millimeters. I've also used pots with a slightly longer bushing length of 3 eighths, or 9.5 millimeters. And then there are long shaft pots with much longer bushings around 3 quarters of an inch, or about 19 millimeters in length. If your pots are mounted to a pick guard or metal control plate, then the short or semi bushing lengths should work great. You could technically use long shaft pots on these, but I don't see why you would. However, if your controls are wood mounted on a guitar like a Gibson SG, then you'll likely need a longer bushing on your pot. Finally, if you've got a guitar with a thicker wooden top, like a Les Paul, then you'll definitely need to go with long shaft pots. In addition to bushing length, we also need to look at bushing diameter so that we can match the pot with the mounting hole on the guitar. Most American guitars use 3 8 as their mounting hole diameter, while many guitars from other parts of the world use the metric M8 bushing, which has a slightly smaller 8mm diameter. If you want to put your metric pots into a larger 3 8 mounting hole, you'll want to first put a locking nut on the pot, mount it to the hole, and then fasten it tightly with a washer and nut. Alternatively, you can try these special washers that I found at All Parts, which will do the conversion. Link in the description. On the other hand, if you want to put 3 8 pots into a guitar with metric holes, then you'll want to widen these holes by either using a wood file or reamer. I've also heard of the 10mm bushing diameter, though I haven't actually come across any pots with this spec yet. However, I have unfortunately come across the much smaller M7 standard, with a 7mm bushing diameter. I kind of dislike these because they're often marketed as guitar pots, but I've never actually come across a guitar with an M7 sized mounting hole. These pots are already really small for typical metric guitars, but are completely unusable on 3 8 mounting holes. So I'd avoid them altogether, unless your guitar has a 7mm mounting hole for some reason. Finally, you'll also want to consider the physical size of the pot. Now in most cases, standard pots should fit in pretty much any guitar, but there's also a whole world of special pots, like push-pull pots or dual pots, which can take up much more space. So make sure to keep an eye on that. I'm starting to get sick of saying the word pot, but unfortunately for me, this video has a part two in the works. In the next video, we'll be looking at all the different kinds of special pots that you can put in your guitar to enable new features and mods. If you want to see that, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Well, they come in all shapes and sizes, my pot! It's okay, this is CTS. It's gonna survive the apocalypse.